Hello, hello, my loves, and welcome to my channel, Maddie's Creating Ideas. I'm Maddie's, and today is the second class of the Pattern Sewing and Tailoring Project. But before we get into this class, I can't start without giving you a big thank you for becoming part of this marvelous thing, for all of this incredible support, which has been so, so, so much more than I could have ever imagined. That excitement has been so contagious. Those beautiful comments that you've left me on Instagram and on Facebook and on the actual videos have been really gratifying for me. So I know we're on the right track and that gives me more motivation to teach. I know that from here on out, everything will be great. And so without further ado, welcome to the marvelous world of creating an article of clothing. To make a piece of clothing, it can be made in an industrial manner with more sophisticated machines and tools, or it can be made in a more artisanal manner with simpler tools. Regardless of whether you use an industrial or artisanal method, the outcome will always be the same, which is to dress a body. Here we're going to work in an artisanal manner, so you can do whatever you want. You can make your own clothing, because why not? Or you can make things for your family, your kids, your grandkids, I don't know, your mom. Or maybe you can turn it into your profession, your work that you can live off of. The important thing is that whatever reason you want to learn how to sew is, we will always work with people. Well, at least what I'm going to show you is for working with people. Those people we're going to refer to from now on as the client. Let's talk about the three basic principles of sewing. First, create a space to be able to work comfortably. The second has to do with customer service. And the third is giving quality items with punctuality. No matter how small, making sure your workspace is organized is incredibly important because it's there that you will spend many, many long hours. That's why it should be a cozy place. It should be that place where you can go to get inspired. Make sure that there's good lighting. If it's natural lighting or LED lighting, then that's even better. Put your tools in specific places that are easy to reach and label them if possible. Use a chair that has a back and is very firm. Rolling chairs won't really do the trick here. Have a large mirror available and a changing space so that the client feels more comfortable. Have a bulletin board with reminders and notes within your view because those are super important. Be mindful of the electrical outlets to avoid accidents for your own security. Have a bin for your textile waste. Remember you can recycle these pieces. Keep your tools in good shape. When you're done with your work, disconnect all of the electronics from the outlets please. Make sure you go over all of the security measures that you have to follow in your workspace according to the laws where you live. Establish a set work time and take advantage of it. Remember, you have a family. With customer service, it's incredibly important to have social and communication skills because taking care of people is definitely the best kind of publicity. If you treat them nicely and do a good job, they're going to leave running to give you the best publicity. So pay attention to the following tips. Keep in mind that having a good personal image and a nice, clean, and organized workspace are your first kind of presentation to the client. Another thing is that you take care of your clients at the time that was scheduled. That way, you can make sure to focus on them 100%. Offer some reference materials to help them find what they're looking for. Listen to them and pick the style with them, always respecting their decisions. Take notes of everything that they want, all of the notes, all of the possible details that you can, including the design details that they've picked out. Remember, everything written down will always work out better. Make sure that from the first instant, you decide what you want to charge. Concentrate while taking the measurements. This is the fundamental, basic step to ensure the success of your work. Call the client a day before you give them their article of clothing because you have a responsibility to always be present. Be mindful of all the little details before giving the client their garment. A happy client will return and or will recommend you to others. If from the beginning, from the first little details, you organize yourself and use an agenda, you'll be able to give clients excellent garments and very punctually. All of the tips that I'll be giving you now, I'm sure, will help a lot. Create an inventory of the materials that you have. That way, you know what you really have to work with. For each project, calculate the amount of materials you're going to use and make a list. Organize a specific day to buy the necessary materials. That way, you aren't running around last minute. If you buy wholesale or from a provider, calculate the time that it takes to have the products delivered. Invest in quality materials. This will add value to everything you make. Assign a specific date to try on and one to deliver. Make sure to call your client if anything comes up. And lastly, give them your business card. 
if we dive into the market, there are so, so, so many tools, like my goodness, so many. Good thing uh, this class makes it easier to pick. Little by little, you'll recognize the tools and more so when you're submerged in this world. This does not mean you should go running to buy the whole warehouse after watching this video and saying, oh, well, Maddie said I have to buy la 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 la. No, 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 no. You work with what you have at home. For you to understand better which tools are the most essential, or at least the ones you'll be needing as time goes on, we are going to organize by times of work. There are inspiration tools, tools to make the patterns, tools to cut, and there are also the tools to use when it's time to actually sew. There are also tools we use to make the finishing touches on the garment. And lastly, some materials and tools that will help you on the day you hand the garment over to your client and can finally say, we're done, this work is finished. The tools for inspiration are the tools you'll have in your workspace that would help give your clients ideas for what they're really looking for. These ones will work. Invest in fashion magazines, catalogs, and things that have models. But if you like to draw, you can make your own sketches using ideas that you may have. It's important to have fabric samples so you can show the client what kind of fabrics you have to create an idea of what you're going to make. If for any reason your creativity is blocked and you feel like you have no ideas, take a break for at least 15 minutes. Your brain will be oxygenated and your ideas will flow much, much better. Once your client has chosen the design or the model that they want, it's time to make the pattern. Up next, I'll give you the tools you need to then make the patterns. If you don't have all of the tools, worry not. Little by little, you can obtain them. You do not have to have them all. Work with what you have at home. A notebook to register information, notes, measurements, and models chosen by the client. It can be any notebook that you choose. Paper to make the patterns. It can be any kind of paper you would like. Craft paper, recycled paper, well, you'll see what you like to use. A long ruler, 50 centimeters or one meter. There are curved dressmaker rulers that are super easy to use, but you could also do some of the drawings by hand. Measuring tape. There are in centimeters and in inches. A graphite pencil and an eraser. A pencil is so much better than a pen because you can erase just in case. You'll need other colors and markers because you'll be making marks on the patterns as you go along. A smooth, straight table to make the drawing of patterns a little bit easier. If you don't have one, then at least use your dining room table. A calculator where you will divide all of the measurements you've taken of your client. Please, please use scissors just to cut paper. That way you don't damage the fabric scissors. Tape. With this, you'll be able to transform some patterns and put them together. A cutting wheel of some sort that will also help trace patterns. These hangers are optional. They're good for hanging up all of the patterns that you've already made, and you can hang them up on a rack and have them all organized. Once you have the pattern ready, then comes the next step, which is going to the table to cut. Here, we'll also need some tools, which I'll give you up next. A smooth table that's at least 1 meter 50 long by 1 meter wide at about your hips height. Tailoring chalk or special markers to mark fabric or even a little piece of bar soap work too. Some needles and a needle pillow to organize them. Weights to hold down the patterns and the fabric on the table in case you didn't use any needles. Scissors only to cut fabric. Take care of the sharpness. There are other options as well, which are these uh, tooth scissors, which we use sometimes to give a special finish to the fabrics. A rotary cutter or a circular cutter, which are pretty in style nowadays, but if you're going to use this, then you have to buy a supporting cutting board. I always use a basket where I organize all of the fabrics that I've already cut out and are ready to sew. You can also have an apron where you can have some of your tools at hand. Ready! And now that we have everything cut, it's time to sit at the sewing machine to sew. To be able to do that, you need other tools, which I'll give you right now. A sewing machine. It can be manual or electric. You can also sew by hand. I learned by sewing by hand. And what do you need for that? A couple of needles and a lot of motivation. There are stitches that you can definitely do by hand. Overlock machines or sergers are ideal to give nice finishes inside the piece. When you're ready to start sewing, have the following tools on these photos on hand. A mannequin is a huge help, but if you don't have, then it's no problem. Thimbles. I don't really use them, but if you want to use them, then by all means, buy them. Thread. Either to sew by hand or for any of the sewing machines. Small scissors with a pointed tip for some of the finishing touches, such as little pieces of yarn and things like that. There's a saying that goes, without an iron, there is no elegance. So I'm going to show you the tools that you need to give an amazing luxury finish to the clothes and the garments that you make. 
An ironing board with a cushion top is ideal. A preferably steam iron, but if you don't have one, then these spray bottles also do the trick when using them with a cloth to protect the fabric. A round or circular cushion that you can make yourself and fill it, and that helps iron the curved parts of the clothing. And lastly, a hanging rack to organize all of the pieces that you've finished. The time to give the client their garment has come, and these tips will also help. Always use that agenda with the notes and the try-on dates and the delivery date. Make sure you have the garment hanging, waiting for the day that your client comes to pick it up. And don't forget to give them your business card at that very moment. Don't forget, a happy client will always return. Without further ado, out of all of the tools that I've named here, write which ones you have and which ones you don't. Make your inventory list. And if you have all of the necessary tools and there's nothing left for you to do, it's time to start designing. In the next class, I'll give you the tricks to designing according to the typology of your client, body shape, skin color, and some key tricks to highlight their figure. I bet not everyone gives you these tips, huh? So we'll see each other next week for this new material, which I know will help you so much. If you're thinking, well, Maris, when will we start to sew? Don't worry. Remember that to write a book, it's necessary to learn the alphabet first. There's a wonderful road ahead waiting for us. Don't leave. Please leave me a comment telling me what you thought of today's video, where you're writing me from, or just something nice to keep me inspired. And remember, this project is called The Artist You Have Inside is Bigger Than You Can Imagine. See you next Monday. Thank you so much. And, and that's it. Bye. And before leaving, make sure to subscribe and click the little bell to get new video alerts. Bye!